The Wolf and the Lamb by Mead McGuire Here are two active youths who love to go camping in the rugged mountains are spending their vacation that way. This morning they are climbing the mountain over rocks and through bush and trees when they hear a faint noise. It is a baby animal crying. After a brief search they locate the little creature which is crying pitifully and appears nearly starved. They do not know just what it is but feel sorry for it and take it home and feed it generously. And it soon begins to grow and become active. One day an old neighbor comes over and asks with astonishment, Boys, where did you get that animal? Do you know what it is? They are thrilled when he tells them that it is a genuine timber wolf. It grows rapidly and is playful, and the boys are proud of their discovery. In the spring the young wolf is running out in the field when he comes to a flock of sheep with many lambs just about his size. He is fascinated and wishes he were one of them. Finally he decides that he will try to be a lamb. He imitates their actions, jumping about and playing with them and nibbling the green grass. After a time the sheep lie down in the shade of the trees and a little later an old sheep opens her eyes and looking at the young wolf asks, Who are you? What are you doing here? Why, he replies, I am one of the lambs. What? You a lamb? Yes, I want to be one, and I am trying the best I can. I am doing just like the other lambs. Do you think that little wolf would become a lamb if he tried hard? I know you will answer, certainly not. Yet many professed Christians say just about what the little wolf said. I'm trying to be a Christian, trying to do right, trying to overcome my sins. I'm doing the best I can. Is there any way that the little wolf could actually become a lamb? Perhaps you would unhesitatingly say, no, that is impossible. But there really is a way. God could recreate the wolf and make it a lamb. This crude illustration pictures the only way any sinful human being can become a Christian, a child of God. We have inherited through our natural birth a sinful wolf nature. We cannot by any human effort change that nature. That is why Jesus said, you must be born again. This changes our nature and so the word of God says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 This new creature is a lamb, for the Lord calls all his children lambs, or sheep. John 10.14 All others are wolves, for they are controlled by the fallen wolf nature. So when Jesus sent his disciples to preach the gospel, he said, Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Luke 10.3 These vital truths are made plain in the following statement. Jesus continued, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. John 3.6 By nature the heart is evil, and who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Job 14.4 no human invention can find a remedy for the sinning soul. The carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Romans 8.7 and Matthew 15.19 The fountain of the heart must be purified before the streams can become pure. He who is trying to reach heaven by his own works and keeping the law is attempting an impossibility. There is no safety for one who has merely a legal religion, a form of godliness. The Christian's life is not a modification or improvement of the old, but a transformation of nature. There is a death to self and sin and a new life altogether. The Desire of Ages, page 172 the Lord makes plain just what changed must take place in our lives and the provision He has made to bring about this change. 
When the Spirit of God takes possession of the heart, it transforms the life. Sinful thoughts are put away, evil deeds are renounced. Love, humility and peace take the place of anger, envy and strife. Joy takes the place of sadness and the countenance reflects the light of heaven. No one sees the hand that lifts the burden or beholds the light descend from the courts above. The blessing comes when by faith the soul surrenders itself to God. Then that power which no human eye can see creates a new being in the image of God. Desire of Ages, page 173. Again and again we are given the assurance of God's purpose to produce in us this transformation of nature and thus give us complete deliverance and victory over sin. Without this change of nature, all our efforts will end in failure and defeat. When the soul surrenders itself to Christ, a new power takes possession of the new heart. A change is brought which man can never accomplish for himself. It is a supernatural work bringing a supernatural element into human nature. The Desire of Ages, page 324.